the car market has completely changed. The Fed increased interest rates. So as a buyer, yeah, things are negotiable again. Car dealerships are in trouble. Car dealers are going to die. Be careful. Just like those profits just must have been out of this world. I'm quite envious on the new car stores. Oh, the sky is falling. The world is collapsing. The car market is collapsing. What are we all going to do? Today's video, not everything is dying. I'm gonna tell you if you're a consumer, what is good news for you? If you're a dealer, what is bad news for you and how you can fix it? Today's video, super, super informative. Why? Because the car market has completely changed and done a 180 because everything is in the buyer's favor. Everything is a buyer's market. And as a buyer, you might be afraid to buy a car right now because because financing options are just so ridiculous, like interest rates are through the roof, right? What else should you do? And for the reason that I'm gonna tell you, that's the bad news for the used car dealer. It's just so much information in today's video. I love doing market updates. Stick with me, because today you're gonna learn a lot about what's going on. So let's get going. <laughs> So hey there, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. I own a small car dealership in New Hampshire and I like to say that I have a little bit of a crystal ball, a little bit of insight into how the world is going. How is our economy going? Why? Because people need transportation. So if they're buying expensive novelty cars, secondary vehicles, just toys in general, things must be good, right? Well, that is not what's happening. Things, people are not buying their toys. They're trying to liquidate their toys. They are not spending and purchasing expensive vehicles. They are actually trying to call me to say, Craig, I wanna get out of my expensive payment. I need something lower. I need something cheaper. What do you have? Cash car, $6,500. Now, when I started my car dealership, 2,500 to 6,500 was that sweet spot. It was 2008. We were in a recession. Just things were really bad because the banks had tightened up. People weren't able to get financing. They just needed to get their cash cars. So prices on cash cars increased, but the prices on newer cars and like higher end cars decreased because people just didn't have the money, the excess cash to buy that stuff. But we are kind of in that same situation again, but just different. What do I mean, Craig? Well, I'm going to explain to you what I mean. And I'm going to say it all in very easy terms, very easy to understand for everybody. You don't have to have any car knowledge. It can apply to anyone. Let me give you a quick overview of what happened. Most of you already know, so I'll do a very quick recap. The Fed increased interest rates because we were given so much money for so long that we were spending it. We were just spending it. It was all novelty and it was fun money and people were buying boats and campers and RVs and traveling more and spending more money on cars and businesses were spending more money on 8,000 pound plus vehicles because they were tax deductible. It was just like the wild, wild west in the car industry because everybody had a surplus of cash that honestly we needed to spend. Because if you're a business owner and you don't spend it, Uncle Sam's just gonna tax it back anyway. So go out and buy those 8,000 pound plus cars, you know, go travel for work related expenses, like all that stuff. We're not there anymore, okay? Right now we are in a different market because inflation took over and they increased car prices tremendously. I always say it's supply and demand. There was limited supply post COVID because they weren't producing vehicles. There was a high demand because everybody had cash. So like supercar prices just soared. Ferrari prices went soared and you're paying now a market adjustment on every vehicle. So when MSRP was say $50,000, you couldn't get that car and dealers had all the power. It was a seller's market and they'd say, you know what? Limited production, limited inventory, limited supply, high demand. If you want this car, it's $10,000 over. You don't get a test drive. You don't get to look at it. You order it and it shows up and you pay $10,000 over. That's how the world was. That is not anymore. Do not pay market adjustment. Do not overpay MSRP. I'm going to get to that in the next step. What am I talking about? Why would you pay over MSRP any more. It is a buyer's market. You as the buyer have all of the power, all of the control. Now I need to preface this because when I say that people are now going to think, oh, I'm going to go into that dealer and I'm just going to take such advantage of them. I'm going to offer them $5,000 and a $10,000 car and they're going to take it because the buyer, that is not how it works. Okay. We can't sell at a loss. It is not possible. Like we'll, we'll all be out of business. So you have to be reasonable with your values and your offers. If I own it for eight, I'm not going to sell it for six. Okay. It isn't an option. So as a buyer, yeah, things are negotiable again, whereas they weren't for a while during COVID 2021, 2022, a buyer could come in and say, hey, would you take X amount? And I'd say, you know what? No, I'm sorry, because if, if you don't like it, I will sell it tomorrow to somebody else for my asking price. So I had the power, I had the pull to say, no, I'm sorry, I'm not overcharging, but I'm charging market rate. Now everything's negotiable again. So you can walk in somewhere and say, hey, listen, this is my budget. This is what I came up with. I did my research and I found that this car is more suitable at this price. For me, this is what I can afford. And this is what the market on this 
car is. Would you accept XYZ? I have my financing in place already. I already went to my credit union. I have my pre-approval or I'm a cash buyer. Those offers are very likely to be accepted. Why? Because as a guy that owns a car dealership, cash is king. If you come in prepared, if you come in ready to buy, I want to sell it to you. I'm not going to turn down a sale in hopes that someone else shows up this week, next week, or the week after. We want those sales. That is what I mean when I say the buyers have the power. You have the power to be reasonable and go buy your car on the spot and have it be negotiable again. That's great. Now let's talk about credit score. Your credit score significantly impacts interest rates. And if you have a low credit score, you're probably more likely to have a higher interest rate. If you have a great credit score, you're probably more likely to have a lower interest rate which is kind of a cool segue into this next little bit of news that I'm gonna tell you. I've never owned a Tesla. I got the go ahead to order a Tesla Cybertruck. So I should be the proud new owner of a Tesla Cybertruck to move our Ferrari Flip series over to something really, really neat. I went to do my credit application, it was denied. Why? I have great credit. Why was my application that? <laughs> because of my Aura app. I use this product called Aura and it locks my credit so no one can check my credit without me saying it's okay to. Aura does 1,000 things to help improve my credit and my security on the internet. So if you've ever done a Google search for your name, you know your email address, your home address, your phone number, your family's relationships, it's all out there. It's insane what people can find on you on the internet. And my name is out there, like I am on the internet. So it's scary to think that people are able to find information about me on the internet. So that's why I'm using Aura. It's the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows me which data brokers are selling my information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. I don't even have to do it, it does it for me. It also shares with me how many data brokers Aura found that were selling my information. And I can lock my credit score, I can freeze things, I can see who's checking my credit, I can see what's happening with my name on the internet. It also comes with other features like an antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, and identity theft insurance. And you may already be paying for one or more of these tools with separate accounts. I can get it all bundled together through Aura. You're not that safe unless someone else is protecting you. And Aura is always on doing the hard work to keep me safe so I can focus on other tasks with peace of mind and not having to worry about what is out there and who's trying to target and attack me. You can go to the link in the description to visit Aura. You can download the app and start your two week free trial for yourself. Thank you, Aura. Let's get on with the video. Well, it is warm in there, so let me step outside. I like to walk and talk. Anyway, what does this mean for you if you're a car dealer? Well, we overpaid for far too long, myself included. We were forced to because we needed that supply. Whatever the price was is what we had to pay. Well, things have changed because interest rates have changed and the buyers stopped purchasing. So that affects the car dealer. I've made several videos about car dealerships are in trouble. Car dealers are going to die. It's true. I mean, we're there. We're, we're near there. When the interest rates, for different reasons too, when interest rates increase, their lines of credit, their floor plan, interest rates increased and it lowered the prices and the same thing with like the housing market kind of happened in 2008 people overfinanced their house or they refinanced their house and then they said oh whatever the, when the rate changes and your 5-1 adjustable rate mortgage changes just refinance your house which is what they're telling you right now be careful be careful buy the house not the rate right don't buy the rate buy the house okay yeah cool unless your house isn't worth what it's worth now when you're ready to buy the new rate right when rates go down and you own the house for too much you can't refinance and then you're stuck with an overpriced house at a high rate. So be careful with buy the house, not buy the rate. When your realtor says buy the house, not the rate, just be careful. Same idea is with cars. So if a dealer pays $18,000 on a car that was worth $18,000 four months ago, and then their interest rate increases, they have to make a payment on their floor plan every single month. Well, now their interest rate's higher. So they're making higher monthly payments. Well, now the value of the car has decreased too, because the amount of buyers have decreased and the amount of inventory has increased. I hope you're following me here. So the value of that $18,000 car might be 16,000. So that is when the dealer takes a loss. What does that mean? How does that work? You gotta liquidate. If the buyer isn't buying at retail, you gotta dump it through the auction, okay? When you dump it through the auction, you gotta take what you can get. Now, I would go and buy that car for its current market value, say $16,000. Now I can sell that car, make a profit, reevaluate the system, I can reassess and readjust, and that is now the current selling value on that $18,000 car is now $16,000 car. Someone is going to have to take a loss, and sometimes it's just better to take your losses and start fresh. Someone once told me, like, picture I have just this, like, a piece of paper. It's on fire. You have to get rid of this paper. The longer I hold it, the less paper I have because the more that the paper burns. Get rid of that paper now while you can. Get rid of that car while you can because it's going to be worth less and less. And then go buy a new piece of paper for less. And that's happening to my Audi e-tron right now. I paid $82,000 for it. It is now worth $65,000. I can't bear to take the loss in 12 months. I it just mentally, I can't do it. But that piece of paper is going down in flames. And the longer I hold it, which has happened in the past three months, the more it goes down in value. People are reassessing 
think the whole EV community and the whole EV world and the prices are going down. And even I just read that Ford is stopping, stopping moving forward with their electric vehicles for now. So I gotta get rid of it. And car dealers are gonna have to do the same thing, which is why things are negotiable again. So you can walk into a car dealership, see how long they've had it for sale for. And there are hundreds of websites out there that tell you how long they've had it for sale for. You can go make your offer based on the current value and use how long they've had that car for as a negotiating tool for yourself. I wanna get into why it's better to buy a brand new car than a used car. So a friend of mine who runs a lot of my clients for me, she asked if it's a good time to buy a new car. I said, yeah, absolutely. She didn't wanna sell her car because she owns it and she has a good rate on it. And I had to explain, wow, this car smells like the devil's lettuce. Okay, so I had to explain to her no, it's a perfect time to buy. But interest rates are like 9% for good credit. They are if you go to the bank. If you go buy a brand new car, the incentives are why you would get a better deal. So if I go to the credit union and say, hey, I want to finance a car, they'll go, all right, current rate is 8.5%, whatever it is, 8.5%. I would now have an 8.5% rate to go buy a pre-owned car, like a 22 or a 23 something, right? So I'm stuck at a higher rate unless... I go buy a brand new car. If I buy a brand new car, there are incentives. The dealers are slow. They have a surplus of inventory they cannot get rid of. So I'm gonna get into market adjustments again and negotiating on new cars in a minute, but now they need to liquidate their cars, especially their leftovers. So the manufacturer themselves is offering incentives like cash back or reduced rates below MSRP or financing options. For example, I scrolled through just a few of the car manufacturers' websites just to see what they're offering for incentives. And Honda is offering rates as low as 2.9% for 24 to 36 months and 3.9% for up to 60 months. So when you go to a credit union and you are getting a rate of eight, nine, 10% on a pre-owned car, you can go buy a brand new car for a significantly reduced rate. So yeah, a brand new car might be a few thousand dollars more than a one-year-old car. You'll save it in the interest that's 50%, 75% less than the actual credit union and bank. Now it's not just Honda that's doing this. I'm looking at my phone to read it to you. Toyota on their RAV4s, 4.99% on 60 months. That's literally 50% the interest rate that you would get on a certified pre-owned car. GM, Chevy Silverados have 2.9% APR for 72 months. You can get under 3% for 72 months on a brand new Silverado. That's how slow their sales are. And it keeps going. They are also offering no payments for 90 days, meaning, yeah, you're going to incur the interest, but you can drive a car on their dime for 90 days. Ford, let's get into Ford. Ford is offering 3.9% for 60 months on their F-150 plus 1500 customer cash. So they're reducing the price by $1,500 and offering you 3.9% on a 2023 Ford because it's a leftover and they gotta get rid of this stuff. We're already into 2024. And when the market is slow and things aren't selling, they cannot be carrying these cars. The values are gonna go down more and more and they need to start pushing out the new cars. This is a big one and this is a whole new topic. We talked about financing interest rates and buying them brand new. Ram is offering 15% below MSRP. So if MSRP is $50,000, they're offering $7,500 off of that. Did my math, is my math correct? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So $7,500 off of MSRP. Now let me put this in perspective. In earlier in this video, I said dealers were charging $10,000 over MSRP. Now they can charge $7,500 less, 15% less than MSRP and still make a profit? How is that possible? And if that is possible, how much money were they making off us when they were charging market adjustments? You're telling me they have 15% to take off of MSRP and they were charging us that entire amount plus just like, those profits just must have been out of this world. I'm quite envious on the new car stores. Got he! <laughs> and they're the ones that are gonna get the business right now too because they're getting the incentives from the manufacturer to reduce the price, to offer cash back, and to give you better rates than the bank can. Those are all big, big deals. Now I just talked about Ram, and I'm gonna read this right to you. Get in on the Ram Truck Month exclusive deals and get 10% below MSRP for an average of $8,400. So I just guessed it, like $7,500, $50,000 truck. Their average is $8,400 below MSRP. Just That is just astronomical. So let's say their market adjustment was $10,000 originally, and now they could take $8,400 off. That means there was an $18,400 profit on new cars when we were in a shortage. 
That's wild to think of that. All right, last one on Ram, and then I'm gonna move on. The 2023 Ram 1500 Classic. Save $9,144 off a Tradesman Crew Cab. That is insane. $9,000 off. It just makes me feel so bad for everybody that paid market adjustments. All right, I've done videos on market adjustments, and if you own your car too much, you have like negative equity in your vehicle. I've done videos on that. I'm just gonna say it really, really quickly what happens. If you have negative equity in your vehicle, like you paid too much and now it's worth less, here's your options. You can either, number one, trade your car and you're going to have negative equity. So whatever your negative equity is, you can roll it into your new loan. So if you pay $10,000 on a car and you have $2,000 negative equity, you'll end up like taking a loan out for 12,000, not 10,000. And then that dealer can pay off the car that you own for too much money. That's option one. Number two is you take an extra amount of cash. So if you're negative by $2,000, take an extra $2,000 out of your bank, suck it up, pay it off. Just pay the extra $2,000, sell your car outright, and you're done, right? It is going to cost you some. A third option, don't do it. Like, let it get repossessed if you want it for too much. Don't do that. It's gonna kill your credit. Then you won't get finance for another car. And if you do, you're gonna get absolutely destroyed in just penalties and fees and credit and interest rates. It will affect you. So yeah, you might take a, a win on your repossession and like taking the loss, take, get a win by taking the loss. Like the bank takes it back and forgives you. They don't forgive you. It will follow you for seven years and you're gonna pay for it on every other loan. So that is an option out there that you shouldn't use. Last topic, car dealers. Use car dealers. I'm gonna tell you what to do. I told you I'd get to you guys too. I own a car dealership. I saw the market changing. I liquidated. I got rid of the expensive stuff. I actually got rid of my toys. The Ferrari sold and I'm trying to get rid of everything that cost me a lot of money or cars that I may own for too much. I took it up. I sucked it up. I took the loss and I moved on and I bought cars at the new value. So now I have cars, a majority of them. There's still some that are overpriced because I own them for too long and own them for too much. But I took the loss, moved on, reassessed and started the lot over with the current market's valued inventory. So now people can buy cars again. There are still people buying cars. They're just buying them at the right price. So if you own them for too much, just figure it out, get rid of them, take the loss, move on, buy cars at the current market. Now there's good news in it for you. Tax time is coming up. Tax season is coming up and people will have their tax refunds and it's good, they'll buy cars. What kind of cars are they gonna buy? Probably cash cars, okay? So I've been stocking up, I hate buying these things. I've been stocking up on cars from like $2,500 to $6,500. It's tough to buy trucks. I live in the Northeast, they get really rusty. Tough to buy trucks and SUVs in that price range. So I've been trying to buy cash cars to float through tax refund season. It will help you move on, get rid of the old stuff out with the old, in with the new, buy what is selling. We're in a cash car market unless you can find cars. And if you're not buying cash cars and you need to buy those trucks and SUVs, make sure you're buying them right because prices are still declining. So watch your butt. That is all for now. I like to say that I have a crystal ball. I can see how people are spending or not spending and the reasons why. I mean, I own, I own a business. I get stuck in it too and, and it hits me hard and it hits me well. Just, I like to share it with you so you see what's going on. If this video was at all informative, educational, entertaining, if you could do me a favor and just hit thumbs up, I'd really, really appreciate it. It helps the videos, it boosts the algorithm. I'd love to hear your comments on whether I'm right or wrong or what I missed or what else you'd like to see videos on because I'll make videos on that stuff too. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. Subscribe for more car content. I'll see you all later. Adios.